Good evening and a warm welcome. I'm Griha Atul and you're watching Viewpoint. It is an unfortunate day today as we have lost our brave hearts to an infiltration bit by terrorists trained in Pakistan. Right now, the hunt is underway for terrorists involved in the Anant Nag encounter that killed an army colonel, a major and a Jammu and Kashmir police deputy superintendent of police. In fact, two terrorists have been encircled by the army as the operation continues in the Peer Panjal area of Jammu and Kashmir. Remember, it's been established that the terror machinery emanating out of Pakistan has gone on to bleed India again and claim the life of our best and the brightest. Terrorists continue to cross the line of control into India, even as Pakistan says that it does not endorse terror, adding that the nation itself is a victim of terror. But this has reignited the debate over the sporting ties that go on between India and Pakistan. India recently, remember, played Pakistan, decisively defeating the country in an early stage of the Asia Cup. Now, if Pakistan wins the cricket match against Sri Lanka this evening, India will be playing against the team this Sunday. Next month, we'll also see an India-Pakistan face-off in the World Cup in Ahmedabad. Now, while we have seen the freezing of film ties between the two nations, many are now calling for sports ties to be permanently snapped. While parties from the Kashmir Valley have called for dialogue with Pakistan, many parties, even from the India Alliance, have said that dialogue, sports and cultural exchanges cannot continue if terror persists. So we are asking, if it is really time to completely axe sports ties with Pakistan and leverage India's clout and global sports to isolate Pakistan, or whether sports, art and culture should have to undergo this politicking, that is also the big question that we are asking here. जब तक कोई रास्ता न ढूंढा जाए जिससे अमन आ सके लड़ाई से अमन नहीं आता है बातचीत से अमन आता है कहीं ये गैर मुल्की किसी और मुल्क से तो नहीं है जब आतंकी माहौल बनाती है पाकिस्तान तो उनके साथ किसी तरीके का संवाद नहीं होना चाहिए स्पोर्ट्स ग्राउंड पे हो या किसी सोशल ग्राउंड पे हो किसी कल्चरल ग्राउंड पे हो या किसी तरीके का बायोलैटरल रिलेशनशिप हो इसे सबक लेना चाहिए इस गवर्नमेंट को दिल्ली की गवर्नमेंट को कि कश्मीर में हालात अभी मामूल पर नहीं आए हैं और ये प्रपगंडा हो रहा है मामूल पर है अगर उसके ऊपर दबाव डालना है तो उसको अलग थलग करना पड़ेगा नॉर्मल चीजों के अंदर हमारे साथ रिश्ता तब तक नहीं कर सकते जब तक आप खुद नॉर्मल नहीं हो Let's now give you a memory jog. Let's tell you how terror has impacted sporting, cultural, cricketing ties between India and Pakistan and what has happened in the past. Let's take a look at instances one by one. Remember, after 1993 Mumbai blast, the ODI tour in Pakistan in 1997, that was massively impacted. This was the showdown of terror over cricket that continues. 2001, after the parliament attacks that of course had a backing of Pakistan, Test series in India and Pakistan in 2004 were happening. At that time, uh, also this particular conversation had started. 2008, Mumbai attacks. Remember the big one that is very, very fresh in everyone's memory. India, in fact, exited from the 2009 series. This is where it all started, where India decided to take those decisive steps and when there was entire discussion on how film and sporting ties need to be completely snapped between the two nations if this terror angle really persists. India-Pakistan clash in World Cup semis in 2011. That was another time that the two nations really came together. Uh, if we go further, if we take a look at 2016 Pathan court attack, Asia Cup clash was happening in 2018, where again India and Pakistan were facing off against one another. Further off, 2019, the Pulbama attack, BCCI, in fact, then also sought a ban from ICC of Pakistan, from the International Cricketing Council. That was an important aspect that was discussed back then. And because of which, we're also talking about how, whether or not, this should be the conversation that needs to be started once again, especially after 
what we have seen happen in Anantnag today. Let me actually take this across to my guests who are joining me on Viewpoint this uh, evening. In fact, uh, all the guests are with me. Anshul Avijit of the Congress Party is with us on the broadcast. Also with us is Major General A.K. Sivash, who's joining us on the broadcast. And Jahangir Ali, who's a journalist, is also with us. Anshul, I'll start with you. The fact that the conversation around snapping of ties between the two nations, especially sporting ties, even as the Asia Cup is underway, there's a World Cup coming up, has again started. What is the Congress's stand on it, considering your alliance partners and many members of the Congress and the India bloc are still supporting conversation, dialogue, opening of channels between the two nations? Well, I'm not sure this is really the question we should be asking at this point of time when such a terrible incident has taken place and the Prime Minister has been busy since yesterday, uh, you know, in this self-congratulatory mode, celebrating the success of the G20 with, with showers and petals over his head while um, a, 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 an incident went on in Anantanag which led to, uh, to the sacrifice of our security personnel. Uh, I, no doubt later, this, the very blood that is spilt on our borders will be used uh, for politics, uh, for the elections. As many people in the army have told us, this is going to be a very challenging time on the borders because incidents of this nature tend to increase when uh, there is an election year. And no doubt the BJP will be there, the Prime Minister will be there to capitalize on it. I want to remind mm. you of the Pulmama incident that mm. happened before the 2019 in, uh, uh, elections in which many revelations have uh, come out, mm. in which the Prime Minister was busy doing a good video shoot in, in the foothills of the Himalayas, yeah. actually portraying his courage and his resilience in a documentary while uh, 40 personnel were uh, mercilessly killed by uh, an RDS uh, which, which was floating around um, in the state for a long time. A severe uh, failure of our intelligence agencies, of the government in that state for which there is severe indictment mm. of the Modi government and also of the revelations that came from Mr. Satyapal Malik during that time mm. um, that we all know about that you had um, you know, uh, such a large security personnel contingent which mm. actually went by road when they should have been fallen, uh, flown in um, by air. They asked mm. for planes which were not given. They were sitting ducks. So how much the government cares about the security of the personnel is there to be seen. It mm. certainly cares about playing blood, uh, politics with their blood. Uh, these are the real questions that we should be asking. Are the people safe in J Jammu and Kashmir? Are the migrant labor safe? Are mm. the Kashmiri pundits safe? Are, are the civilians safe? Mm. Are the security personnel safe? safe. I mean, this is a side story. This will happen. The government, the sporting contacts, cultural contacts will happen, will mm. unfold as they always do. The government has to take a stand. There are international matches. The, the government actually should be asked what it plans to do with the, um, the, the, the sporting uh, ties with the, the BCCI, I know, has given a statement. Anshul, thank you so much for putting it in perspective for our viewers. I, I would like to actually get back to you, but let me actually bring in other members of the panel. And I would take a cue from the point that you have raised. Uh, Jahangir Ali, why do you think the conversation goes here? Goes to snapping of cultural, sporting ties, film ties, every time there is uh, a terror bait, an infiltration bait. And of course, something huge has happened today uh, that's been reported out of Anantnag. But villainizing an entire nation... That is a conversation that become, uh, begins. There is a politicking that happens. Even today, uh, when we talk about what is happening in, in Jammu, there was protest by the Shiv Sena Dogra community where they were busy attacking the India Alliance or the PDP over statements where uh, the leaders had said that dialogue must continue with Pakistan. Why this politicking? Uh, thank you for hi having me on the show i think uh, i will take uh, take ahead from uh, where gunchul left behind mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the thing is that when pulwama happened uh, the government of india decided that we should not continue any kind of a relationship with india be it a diplomatic relation be it uh, the cricketing relationship or be any other uh, kind of a relation which is why there was a tit, tit for tat uh, from both the countries, the embassies were closed and other things happened. Hmm. But in the past four years, as you must have realized by now, that the, uh, things have not changed uh, for uh, for bad. In hmm. fact, uh, the, the violence in Kashmir has been happening. It has uh, uh, the level of violence has come down, but there have been some very deadly attacks on security forces, and most of them have been linked to Pakistan. Hmm. So, boycotting Pakistan 
uh, snapping the ties with the country does not serve the interest of india i think it's better to uh, better for the both for both the countries to have have some kind of a dialogue at some point mm. uh, if if you if you also see that pakistan is also not in a state where uh, uh, this is just as an offside that it's not in a state where it can engage with uh, india because mm. of the political uh, uh, breakdown that has happened the takeover by the uh, generals in rawalpindi and all those things that are going on in the country Mr. Chaghi, right now really more so, than more than india, it benefiting it india the kind of situation that thing. pakistan currently is and we're talking about the economic crisis the country is also going through True. if we see and this is an established fact that terror continues to emanate out of pakistan there is going to be an international alienation that the country is going to suffer from fatf they have been on the grey list so many times it's been a, a trouble with the imf where where we seeing the country in right now when we talk about what kind of financial crisis the country is being that is, in that is and yet, my point. yet in spite of all despite everything that is happening uh, which is bad for and detrimental for the nation terror com- continues to emanate out of its soil so the questions are important ones that need to be asked of pakistan that is precisely my point india because pakistan is at its lowest ebb hmm. india has an advantage where it can get hold of the country and get uh, international community hmm. to get involved in resolving all the all the problems that exist between the two countries hmm. i think that that, that that india is in a very strong position to you know make a negotiation to get uh, out of this uh, turmoil that mm. uh, that uh, that has been playing on in kashmir okay all right uh, let me also on this uh, note uh, welcome farooq renzu shah who's a former bureaucrat who's also joined us on the broadcast mr shah in fact uh, let me actually take that question to you uh, there was a point that earlier was made by anshul avijit of the congress party we try to contact members of the bharatiya janata party they are refusing from being part of this conversation at least why do you think that is we are talking on a day where something hugely upsetting has happened to the country where we have lost our uh, our, our uh, brave jawans uh, officers colonels majors and also the, uh, the the deputy superintendent of police it's a huge blow to the security apparatus of the country and it's um, it's very very apparent that all of this terror is coming in from the other side of the border and yet nothing is really been done about it and the con- the the party which is of course the ruling party in the country is on a celebratory stance when it is about G20 and that will be the obvious criticism that the BJP will have to actually bat yeah i tell you one thing uh, this uh, kashmir has become mm. a problem and for some mm. uh, political parties kashmir has become a interest point to garner the votes and in kashmir particularly from 1947 itself when kashmir was divided into pieces mm. deliberately because uh, under the covenant and under the agreement and under the accession mm. it is the entire including gilgit baltistan uh, up to the khanjri pass and durand line is supposed to be part of the accession mm. but you might have seen no ruling party so far has vociferously taken the stand that give us our territory back and that is the now how they use the pakistan is that from zial haq time when he intruded in the radical so, my color my question to G- you is very simple why yeah. is why is the bharatiya janata party taking the high moral ground when they also are busy doing other things that are important politically to them even as the nation grieves the loss of its jawans Uh, this is the uh, your question is to your uh, party bhartiya janata party hmm. i am completely a non political personality hmm. and but at the same time i am telling you hmm. that they should have they should have participated in this hmm. and they should take the stand i am aghast that local political parties have taken the stand of such negotiations which have resulted and ignited the violence and violence suited them only for garnering the votes like what is in kashmir voting kashmir voting is when you have lot of militancy and when such uh, drastic actions happen when our uh, the young persons die when all types of even even when they were the ruling they would kill even innocent people also okay. and 
This violence is shooting political parties for votes. And they want this to continue. Who sour is a political party are using the same phenomena which they should have avoided and they should have hmm. cried and yearned for the peace because we don't want this violence. We have seen a okay. lot of destruction in Kashmir. But okay. for uh, getting power, I think, uh, who is presently, the what is the slogan of 370? It is supported by Pakistan. Okay. So it is a Pakistani slogan. In this name of this slogan, now they want a new violence, chain of violence in Kashmir. All right. and, uh, no, every okay, Mr. Shah, thank you so much for sharing those job. views. Let me actually first bring in Major General A.K. Sivach also, uh, because he's yet uh, left to speak on, on this conversation that we are having. Major General Sivach, you know, given everything, where do you see politics really being played uh, and, and how do you actually read this, uh, this sort of stance by political parties, even the ones calling in for a dialogue and even the ones who are in fact wanting to snap ties with Pakistan? When something as uh, horrific as this has happened, do you think this politicking should be done at all? No, Griha, there is no doubt. Hmm. There is no question of having any dialogue with Pakistan. Hmm. You know, until and unless uh, Pakistan does not uh, leave this terrorism, Mm. as a tool of instrument, yeah. we are not going to have any talk. Mm. You know, you can't have a talks and peace together. And there is no doubt. You see that Pakistan very cleverly trying to divert the attention. Mm. What's happening in uh, POJK and Gilgit, Pakistan? There is a lot of protest which is going on. Whether it is Mujafrabad, Mirpur, Kotli, or it is in Gilgit, Pakistan, where people are telling that open the road from Stardu to Kargit. Because the condition there is atrocious. They want to now join India. Hmm. At the same time, the G20, which has happened, has been hmm. done uh, extremely well by India. Then Chandrayaan 3, which has landed in the South Pole of uh, Moon. Hmm. All these activities are not to the liking of Pakistan. And hmm. they have, you know, this incident has taken. I, I suppose it, we, we are on a slight backward that we have lost uh, two officers uh, of Indian Army and one police officer. But this uh, is an aberration. We will bounce back. The situation overall in Jammu and Kashmir is quite peaceful and normal. Mm. I can say with a lot of authority, I served there for almost 20 years. The violence level has reduced. The number of terrorists have uh, less than about 100. And the way, you know, the violence has been curbed. Terrorism has been wiped off, including from South Kashmir. What is not being reduced to that extent which we like is radicalization in South Kashmir. It mm. needs to be brought down more. Mm. But as far as other uh, you know, parameters of development are concerned, see the tourism is record time. Uh, there are uh, the medical institutions. So all that, all that of course all is part Kashmir. of the discourse, uh, Major General Sivash. But I really want to understand now what we've seen in Anantnag is the terrorists using newer pastures to actually get into this side of the line of control. And of course, security apparatus needs to be working over time to stop that infiltration bit, which has been heavily endorsed by Pakistan. You are saying Kashmir has seen a lot of change, but when it comes to these newer avenues of entering into India, using porous borders like Nepal, how does one deal with it? Uh, absolutely. I agree with you. You see, as far as our counter infiltration grid on line of uh, actual control is concerned, is quite stable and robust. Now they have opened another front, Rajori and Punch, because that area was a dormant. That is south of Pir Punjab. They are trying to activate that, but still we, mm. they are not successful. Mm. Yes, I agree with on this uh, point that the border between India and Nepal is porous. Mm. From there, they can be some terrorists come. But mm. certainly, you cannot have a zero infiltration. Mm. You know, it is humanly impossible to say that you will not allow any terrorists because it is not impossible to have so much to guard one meter to one meter. Mm. But certainly, the, the counter infiltration grid is very, very stable. I commanded a brigade in Machan, in Kupwara, I can say with a lot of conviction, mm. That the counter infiltration grid is very stable. Okay. Counter terrorism grid is very stable. They have started this hybrid warfare. Mm. The hybrid warfare is that they were using a low, a small weapon like pistol, and on an innocent person they were hitting it. Except this incident which has taken place, uh, wherein you have lost a commanding officer of 19 RR and one company commander mm. and and the DSP. I mm. certainly say yes. Uh, you, we are on a back foot as far as this operation comes, but we'll bounce back. The overall, the situation is still very normal. Things are improving. Mm. All parameters of peace and development are ticked. Mm. And you will see it, you know, the elections at grassroots level 
डिस्ट्रिक्ट डॉल पॉइंट काउंसिल इलेक्शन पंचायत इलेक्शन टेकन प्लेस सिक्सटी फाइव परसेंट टू सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट पार्टिसिपेशन डीलिमिटेशन प्रोसेस इज ऑलरेडी ओवर दे आर गोइंग टू बी असेंबली इलेक्शन सो वी शुड नॉट जज इट बाय वॉट हैज हैपन इन वन इंसिडेंट वॉट वी शुड ओवरऑल टेक इट but let me tell you one thing no but what, what are your views about that, india taking the hard stance would you would you uh, support that should india stop all ties with pakistan you know we have stopped all the ties uh, hmm. with uh, pakistan we are not having any bilateral no, ties cricket with pakistan. continues and that's what we are discussing today because unfortunately even during the course of the day when we opened our phone lines today major general sivach the number of people who joined us from various parts of the country at least 90% of those people are of this view that cricketing ties between india and pakistan should also be snapped how does one read uh, that sentiment of india no agree i agree with it but certainly we are uh, bilateral uh, ties as far as the cricket is not there it is only the uh, you know international ties where you mm. have to also honor that but certainly i want to only convey one more point mm. that what is happening is that there are about 10000 laskare toba at jaise mohammed talib still sitting in the training area launch pad in pakistan mm. you know pakistan occupied kashmir uh, they are equipped with uh, all those weapon which were left by the american in afghanistan mm. so pakistan is not going to uh, get them inside pakistan mm. he is trying to send them toward india that you must take it today pakistan is a victim of terrorism mm. created by themselves you know hillary clinton when she came in 2013 mm. she warned them that if you think that you have got a snakes in your court yeah and you think no, that your only uh, never you, you know yeah you were quoting what the external affairs minister said but let me actually bring in anshul avijit even if pakistan says anshul that they are a victim of terror something that has been breeding in on its own ground despite all of that what is really leading to this brazenness the country is in distress the people are in distress and yet this continues to happen if at all there is a tough stance that india really takes against snapping of uh, Uh, for snapping of the cricketing ties as well this is going to hurt the nation really badly what do you think is is actually egging pakistan all despite everything which is against it well precisely for that reason and also the reason that this is an election year and we know that terrorist activities step up during an election year you know at this moment uh, politically diplomatically uh, pakistan seems to be very weak there's a caretaker government mm. imran has been ousted um, the army is back in control it's a, it's a vulnerable uh, position for pakistan particularly in the economic front mm. and we know that there is a logical sort of correlation between our election year between economic weaknesses between a political lacuna and the kind of terrorism that exists now the other very important point i think it's about the anantnag incident yesterday tells us mm. that the ferocity of the attack in which two three top level you know security personnels were killed mm. tells us the kind of weaponry that pakistan has i mean they were completely wiped out now there are certain kind of steel core bullets that were left behind when the us left afghanistan and a number of weapons that were left behind mm. that were subsequently passed on to afghan gun runners who passed it on mm. to terrorist organizations uh, i believe in pakistan who are using it now do we have sufficient material to match that they've got top class uh, weaponry with them they've got uh, night time binoculars they've got all kinds of a uh, high grade weaponry with them mm. to attack indian personnel with and they've been successful mm. it does show that they've been successful now we have have developed our ties with the afghan government it's not just about pakistan we have developed ties with the taliban government in afghanistan hmm. in the budget this year in fact 200 crores were allotted to them as aid hmm. while they are supplying weapons via pakistan to be used against security personnel here hmm. there was a mission that went to taliban hmm. all this has to be seen i mean it's not just it's it's a it's a multi okay, so two important approach. points two important points that you have mentioned anshul first i would want mr farooq shah to respond to this farooq uh you know one thing that the congress also has uh, touched upon is that this entire terror, terror activities and everything gets heightened during an election year something that has been reiterated it was a controversy in the past something that was referred to by anshul avijit at the start of this debate where he was referring to the pulwama incident as well i really want to understand this entire narrative shift accusation that is latched on to the ruling party every time where uh, we we see an attempt like this that you know uh, this should be politicized it will of course be uh, used by the bjp for its benefit as far as elections are concerned how does how does one see it 
because like I have been mentioning, there was an attempt to go ahead, be, uh, like just talk about it, talk about the political aspect of it, talk about the leaders who are wanting a dialogue, diss those leaders and in turn garner votes vis-a-vis uh, -vis that. How do you respond to that? I respond with this thing that it is not the present ruling party hmm. or the earlier Congress ruling party which has brought this terror to Kashmir. Hmm. It is from the Operation Tupac, hmm. from Ziyal Hak time, that you enter and capture, enter inside and give thousand cuts to India. So it is the operation and hmm. present uh, army establishment hmm. is part of that operation from continuity uh, hmm. till now. Now, to whom these things suit? Hmm. Who are the people who take a benefit like those uh, brigade hmm. of uh, uh, the local parties who say Pakistan Zindabad hmm. in, in the assemblies? Uh, these type of violence suit them because they take size stances, which are stances to give cuts to India hmm. and their approaches is to give the cut to India. So therefore, I believe that the present terror situation, which is there uh, going on and mm. which, which is going to be ignited, it, it is going to be ignited by the foreign forces, mm. while Afghanistan also seems to be very much active because of the clergy, okay. which has been introduced after 19 Kashmir, who are telling us what will end. And they say, hmm. they are the radical terror. And their radical terror turns the people's sentiments. Okay, but well, you're still not answering my question, Mr. Farooq. Shall let me actually bring in Jangi Rali. Jangi Rali, the other point that uh, Anshul Avjit was making uh, was about the uh, terror infrastructure that uh, Pakistan really brings in, something that has not been able to be combated beautifully by India. How does one respond to that, considering is it that snazzy that the Indian security forces are really not able to do anything about it? And if that were the case, then this is uh, really something which is crucial and it needs to be dealt with more importantly than any of this politicking. I mean, it is very important to understand the terrain that uh, under in which the security forces are operating, especially mm. in case of this Anatnag encounter. Yes. It's a hilly area, there is absolute uh, darkness and there is no, uh, no understanding of the routes, of the map, of mm. the area. So you just have to go into a dark zone and... Hmm. perhaps uh, run into an ambush or walk over the landmines. That okay. is what the uh, strategy has been. Hmm. But coming to the larger point of the cricketing ties, I think both the countries, uh, the, especially the cricketers from the, both the countries have shown a very nice uh, game of they have they, they have shown they have they have shown that humanity still uh, exists and mm. and despite all the antagonism that goes on between the uh, two countries they have mm. shown that we can and we should uh, move ahead with happiness and taking taking that forward okay. that uh, that spirit and while while also at the same time isolating those elements who are responsible for all the mess that is going on in mm. kashmir all right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, gentlemen, for joining me on this debate. That's all the time that I had. And we